good morning and happy Valentine's Day. I hope you take a few minutes to tell those people that you love them and show you that, show them that you care. We had two birthdays this week. Italia Foster's birthday and also, are you ready? <gasps> Brother Bailitz's birthday was last Friday. So we're going to sing, make sure you sing extra strong so Brother Bailitz can hear you. You've had a birthday shout, hooray! We want to sing to you today. One little old and wise and two. Happy birthday to you. On May 15, 1829, John the Baptist appeared to Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery. We're going to watch a video to see what happened during that visit. Chapter 6 Joseph and Oliver are given the priesthood. May of 1829 Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery were translating the Book of Mormon. They read about baptism and wanted to know more about it. Joseph and Oliver decided to ask God. They had faith that he would help them learn the truth. On the 15th of May, 1829, they went into the woods and prayed. A heavenly messenger came to Joseph and Oliver. It was John the Baptist, who had baptized Jesus long ago. A bright light was all around him. John the Baptist had come to give Joseph and Oliver the Aaronic Priesthood. The priesthood is the power of God. The Aaronic Priesthood includes the authority to baptize people. John the Baptist told Joseph and Oliver to baptize each other. Joseph baptized Oliver, and then Oliver baptized Joseph. They went down under the water when they were baptized. Long ago, John the Baptist had baptized Jesus the same way. Jesus had gone down under the water when he was baptized. Joseph and Oliver were filled with the Holy Ghost after they were baptized. The Holy Ghost told them the true church of Jesus Christ would soon be on the earth again. Joseph and Oliver told their good friends they had been baptized. They also told them about the priesthood. But Joseph and Oliver did not tell other people right away. They knew that some people would not believe them and would make trouble for them. Later, three other heavenly messengers came. They were Peter, James, and John, who were three of Jesus' original apostles. Peter, James, and John gave Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery the Melchizedek priesthood. This is also called the Greater Priesthood. Once the priesthood was restored, righteous men could be given authority to help to do God's work on earth. Men who have the Melchizedek priesthood can be church leaders. They can give blessings to people. They can also give people the gift of the Holy Ghost. The restoration of the priesthood is a great blessing. Can you imagine the joy that Joseph and Oliver felt? And those of you who have been baptized, do you remember how you felt when you were baptized? It's a very special day to always remember. We're going to go to a song called The Priesthood is Restored. So, Brother Bayless. All right. Let's go ahead and watch this video, and uh, it's called The Priesthood is Restored. It's a song. We haven't learned it, I mean, I haven't learned it yet, so let's go ahead and watch it together.
In Doctrine and Covenants, section 13, we learn about some very special keys. We're going to watch a little video called The Castle and the Keys. Once upon a time, there was a really big castle. The castle had 50 bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, 5 kitchens, a great hall, and a big library full of books. The castle also had 6 tall towers, and there were stairs in each tower that went all the way to the top. Just outside the castle, there was a royal garden. The garden was beautiful. There were ferns in the garden. There were pink tulips in the garden. There were red tulips in the garden. And there were rose bushes in the garden. The garden was protected by a gate. The gate was locked by the king, and the king held the keys. The castle was also protected by a gate. The castle gate was locked by the king, and the king held the keys. The tall towers were also protected by gates. The tower gates were all locked by the king, and the king held the keys. No one could open the gates unless they had the king's keys. One day, the king called a servant to be a gardener and help take care of the king's garden. The king gave the gardener the key to the garden gate. Now the gardener could open the gate too. Later, the king called a servant to be a guard and help protect the king's castle. The king gave the guard a key to the castle gate. Now the guard could open the castle gate too. Later, the king called a servant to be a watchman on the tower. The king gave the watchman a key to the towers. Now the watchman could open the gates to the towers too. The watchman's key could not open the garden gate. The gardener's key could not open the castle gate. And the guard's key could not open the tower gates. The king only gave his servants the keys that they needed to do what the king asked them to do. The king's keys are kind of like the priesthood keys, and Heavenly Father has all the priesthood keys. There are priesthood keys to pass the sacrament. There are priesthood keys to baptize. And there are priesthood keys to give the gift of the Holy Ghost. There are lots of other priesthood keys too. When Heavenly Father calls his servants, he gives them the priesthood keys that they need. But it's Heavenly Father's power, and we can only get the keys from him. Upon you, my fellow servants, in the name of Messiah, I confer the priesthood of Aaron, which holds the keys of the ministering of angels, and of the gospel of repentance, and of baptism by immersion for the remission of sins. Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery 
read about baptism in the Book of Mormon and wanted to know more. We have a fun little video. What is the priesthood for you to watch? Have you ever heard the word priesthood before? Do you know what that means? Priesthood is the name for God's power. Priesthood is the power that God used to create the world. Priesthood is the power that Jesus Christ used to perform miracles. Like when he fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. Priesthood is the power the Lord used to make some stones glow when the Jaredites needed light in their barges. Priesthood is the power that protected Samuel the Lamanite when he stood on the city wall to teach the gospel. And priesthood is the power that Moses used when he parted the Red Sea. Sometimes, Heavenly Father lets us use His priesthood power to do His work. Like when we use His priesthood power to baptize somebody, or to bless the sacrament. But if we are going to use Heavenly Father's power, we have to use it the way He tells us to. First, we have to be connected to His power. A light won't work if it's not plugged into the power. We have to plug it in first. And second, God told us that we have to have His permission to use His power. If we are connected to Him, and if we have permission, then we can use His priesthood power to serve others and do God's work on the earth. If we aren't connected to Him, then we won't be able to use His priesthood power. If we try to use His priesthood power without permission from Him, he can turn off the power even if we think we are plugged in. The way we get permission from Heavenly Father to use His priesthood power is when we are ordained by the laying on of hands from someone who has authority. This is called the authority of the priesthood. The way to have the power of the priesthood is by keeping all of God's commandments. When we are keeping His commandments, then we are plugged into the power. We need to have the authority and the power of the priesthood to do God's work with Him. The priesthood was taken from the earth for a long time, and no one had the authority of the priesthood. But when Joseph Smith was called to be a prophet, priesthood authority was given to Joseph Smith, and priesthood authority was restored to the earth again. Priesthood is the name for God's power. Today, there are lots of people all around the world who have the authority and the power of the priesthood, and they are helping God do His work. After Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery were baptized, it was the Holy Ghost that helped them understand the scriptures better, and we can too with the help of the Holy Ghost. In the Joseph Smith history, we can read about what helped Joseph and Oliver understand the scriptures. And also think, what can we do to seek the help of the Holy Ghost as we study our scriptures? Here, let's go to the scripture. Immediately on our coming up out of the water after we had been baptized, 
we experienced great and glorious blessings from our Heavenly Father. No sooner had I baptized Oliver Cowdery than the Holy Ghost fell upon him, and he stood up and prophesied many things which should shortly come to pass. And again, so soon as I had been baptized by him, I also had the spirit of prophecy when, standing up, I prophesied concerning the rise of this church and many other things connected with the church and this generation of the children of men. We were filled with the Holy Ghost and rejoiced in the God of our salvation. Our minds being now enlightened, we began to have the scriptures laid open to our understandings, and the true meaning and intention of their more mysterious passages revealed unto us in a manner which we never could attain to previously, nor ever before had thought of. In the meantime, we were forced to keep secret the circumstances of having received the priesthood and our having been baptized, owing to a spirit of persecution which had already manifested itself in the neighborhood. Okay, let's go to Brother Baylitz for some singing time. One of my favorite songs is I Will Follow God's Plan. Uh, because it talks about the end where it says, I will be happy. That's our goal is to find joy. So we want to be happy. So let's sing this song together. <laughs> this video and sing along to seek the Lord early. bookmark that you can put in your scriptures to remind you to seek the Holy Ghost when you are reading. Um, maybe you can find a phrase like the Joseph Smith History 174 that we just got done seeing. Maybe part of that you could write on your bookmark or draw a picture to help you remind you that 
The Holy Ghost is always there. And we can ask him for help as we read our scriptures to understand more. We love you. We miss you and hope you are having a wonderful time. Be good. Be happy. Remember, today's Valentine's Day. Tell the people you love how much you love them. And we will see you next week. Bye.